and welcome to Smart Money, your favorite weekend show. Today we're going to talk about the big sell-off in US technology stocks and how this has impacted mutual funds in India, which have global exposure. Now the Nasdaq index has lost almost 12% this year, underperforming Indian indices like Nifty, which is down just 1.5%. In fact, within the US markets as well, tech stocks have corrected further. The Russell US tech index is down almost 13% this year. Many mutual funds in India have exposure to US tech stocks. So we will be speaking with Niranjan Avasti of Edelweiss who joins us today. He manages the Edelweiss US tech fund. Uh, he of course uh, is the head of Edelweiss as well in terms of marketing the products etc. But he is also going to tell us about what investors should be doing after the recent correction that we have seen. So before that Niranjan, you know just putting up some stats, I think our viewers just had a quick sneak peek. But um, this is how much the stocks and indices have fallen. First, if we can get the previous plate, just to show our viewers how much the markets have fallen compared to the Indian markets, right? So the US markets this year, look at that, S&P 500 down 7%, NASDAQ down 12%, the Russell Equal Weight Tech Index down 13%. Although in the last one year, the markets are still up. So year to date, the markets are under pressure. Uh, compared to the Nifty 50, there is an underperformance. Now let's go to the stocks, right? The US tech stocks. This is the kind of correction that we've seen. Meta has seen the deepest fall. Tesla is down about 30% this year. Amazon is down almost 10% this year. And across the board, Microsoft, Alphabet are all down 8 to about 13 odd percent or so. And finally, if you are an investor in US tech funds, then this is the kind of correction that we've seen in the last three months for these funds. So the Axis Global Innovation Fund is down 12.5% from its peak. The Edelweiss US Tech Fund is down almost 20% and the Kota Global Innovation Fund is down about 18%. A couple of other funds will also come up for you. The Motilal Oswal Nasdaq 100 Fund is down about 10%. So Niranjan, uh, you know, that's the first question, right? Many investors have invested in US funds recently. Can you tell us, um, since the US markets have performed in, in quite a disappointing way, what does one really do now? Right. So uh, thanks, uh, Sonia, for having me on the show. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, over the last, uh, you know, YTD basis, definitely US markets have seen uh, a steep correction. I wouldn't say uh, a very steep because in past equities, uh, particularly US equities, have seen much more sharp correction. But uh, YTD, definitely US markets have seen correction. Within that, if you see US stock, uh, tech stock specifically has corrected a lot uh, and uh, they have underperformed uh, largely the Indian equity markets and a lot of investors who have invested in, uh, you know, uh, these uh, stocks or maybe via through mutual funds or directly over the last two, three years uh, in India would definitely be worried. Uh, so if you ask me, what is the reason? Uh, of course, uh, everyone knows it. Uh, there's nothing new to it is US Fed is starting to taper its bond program, bond bond buying program. And uh, it's set to increase uh, interest rate uh, in the US after a long period of time, uh, which definitely has some impact. And we'll get into details why they get impacted and all. But that broadly is the reason why we are seeing uh, US equity market and specifically tech stock uh, going down. Mm. So, I mean, since we're talking about the reasons, right, uh, we do know that in a high interest rate scenario, generally equities tends to underperform. But particularly yeah. when we talk about the fall in the US markets, it's been quite severe, Niranjan. So, should investors be concerned at this point in time? And if you can look at the past performance, every time there's been, a, you know, a rate increase, what has the... Um, commensurate move been on equity markets globally and then on tech funds as well right so uh, let's understand when interest rate rise uh, why do stock basically particular stock uh, you know correct uh, when interest rate rise usually the valuation of some stocks uh, which tends to be usually on a higher side they correct a lot because the rate at which you discount the forward cash flows of these stocks uh, the discount rate gets increases. Uh, and that is a technical reason. Uh, the other reason is people also believe that when interest rates uh, rise, uh, the economy will take a shot and you know the growth will get impacted. However, uh, one should uh, you know note that whenever interest rates are increased, whenever the Fed decides to increase rates, it usually increases when the economy is on a strong footing. The earnings growth are very, very healthy. 
and uh, historically we have seen uh, at least in the last six rate hike cycles oh, which uh, you know was spanning somewhere around 18 months on an average uh, s&p 500 has returned almost 13 percent on an average during all these six rate hike cycles so Typically, uh, the correlation with interest rates rising and equity is positive. Whenever interest rates have risen to a certain level, equities have actually responded positively over a medium term time. Uh, definitely in the very near term when you know, Fed is trying to tell the market that the bond uh, tapering program would start, interest rates will rise. That particular time, usually uh, the stocks are very, very volatile, but over a period of time, they adjust to the reality, they adjust to higher interest rates and tend to perform uh, basis their underlying earnings because we all know ultimately the stocks return mirror their earnings growth. So historically, this has happened and I think so investors should not be worried. Okay, investors shouldn't uh, be worried. Since we're talking about the numbers, yeah. I mean, I, I, th I think I briefly heard you say that in the last when you know there were uh, the six interest rate hikes that took place the s p 500 has actually given positive returns post that Absolutely. so can you do a quick analysis for us on what the impact on the u.s markets has been ex you know precisely in the last few rate hiking cycles and within that what has the impact been on big technology stocks right so particularly if you see uh let's take example of 2013 to 2017 a similar period where 2013 us fed announced that they will start the bond tapering program uh, they ultimately started increasing rates uh, one and a half two years later which went on until 2017 during this period if you see the s p 500 returns in INR terms 2013 it was up almost 34 35 percent 2014 15 16 on an average it was up around 13 14 percent and even 2017, when ultimately interest rates uh, were at its peak, 2017-18, uh, S&P 500 in INA terms returned almost 22%. So this entire uh, period of 2013 to 17 uh, was one of the best periods for US equity markets uh, in terms of performance. When we talk particularly about the tech stocks, now uh, we at Edelweiss uh, run a US tech uh, you know, portfolio, the underlying fund is JP Morgan uh, US tech fund, which can be uh, taken as a proxy for, uh, you know, what's happening in the US market and how you the tech stock uh, react. If you look at the data, uh, the first rate hike uh, cycle between 2013, when uh, the yields increased by almost one and a half percent, this particular fund returned almost 22 percent during that period. A similar cycle of yields going up during 2015 uh, and then uh, subsequently in 2017 and then 1819 all these cycles where you know uh, yields have increased or interest rates were rising uh, on an average uh, this fund has returned a healthy double digit return mm. uh, the reason for this is us stock uh, tech stock specifically uh, they have very low correlation with uh, us interest rates and us yields uh, and one of the reasons could be uh, the tech stock, if you see over the last decade or so, this, this, this sector, in fact, is uh, the sector with one of the highest earnings growth. And ultimately, as I mentioned, you know, the stock returns will always depend on the underlying uh, earnings growth in the companies. And that is what at display in all the scenario. And we believe uh, over the next uh, months or quarters or even one of two years hmm. uh, as interest rates gradually rise while tech stocks are currently uh, at lows and have seen some correction ultimately good quality tech stocks which have a very strong earning growth uh, would definitely help investors some returns in their portfolios okay so that uh, that is a pretty convincing argument you're saying that the u.s tech stocks don't have a very uh, positive correlation with the interest rate rise and the rise in yields, they don't have too much of an impact as well. At the end of the day, it all boils down to earnings and the earnings for these tech companies are very strong. That I take your point because we're getting positive commentary from a lot of the tech companies globally as well. Let's do one thing. Let's slip into a short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll come back, take up some of your queries as well and continue talking about the big fall that we've seen in global tech stocks and the impact that that has on your portfolio, especially the US-based mutual funds. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. We're going to talk, we are talking about the big fall that we've seen in global tech funds and uh, global tech stocks and what one should be doing now if you have exposure in those funds. We have Niranjan Avasti, the head of product marketing and digital business at Edelweiss Mutual Fund. Edelweiss runs a tech fund as well. Uh, so we're asking him what they're recommending investors to do. Uh, Niranjan, you know, before the break, you were telling us how in a high interest rate scenario, actually the S&P 500 has always, always delivered positive returns about 15 to 20 percent on an average in the last many years and tech stocks have done well because that's a high growth sector so what should right. investors in US based funds do the same funds that have fallen about 10 15 percent in the last three months what's the advice now right. so investor uh, as an investor one needs to understand uh, why we invest uh, in overseas uh, funds or overseas we invest for diversification uh, if you see the correlation of U.S. market with Indian market, it's barely around 0.06% over the last 30-40 years, which means there are times when U.S. market won't do well uh, and Indian markets would do well and there are times when it would be reversed. Uh, so case in point, a year like 2011, uh, in INR terms, U.S. market returned almost 22%, uh, whereas Nifty was down almost 22%. So if, if you have a blended portfolio, you have a diversified portfolio, your portfolio would be benefited. Uh, similarly, in 2015, when U.S. markets were up, or 2017, when U.S. markets were down, uh, Indian markets were up almost 30%. Uh, a similar period where you know uh, one market is down, another market is up. A diversification uh, would you know a diversification benefit would kick in uh, in your portfolio. So investor needs to understand that not uh, there won't be periods when both Indian as well as some other markets like US would do well. Uh, US market, as you pointed out, uh, Sonia have done really well, and particularly the tech stocks over the last two three years. If you see the returns over the last three and five years, they have been on a very high double digit return uh, in the range of 20-25%. Uh, a period like this, when interest rates are rising, some of these tech stocks are, uh, you know, pricey, you would definitely see volatility. Uh, the another point one should uh, remember is in equities, you are always, uh, you will always see the best periods of return very close or coming very closer to the bad period when uh, the returns are bad. Uh, so ultimately, you can't time the equity markets. You can't time uh, when uh, you get in and when you get out. The best strategy is to stay invested. And in fact, the better strategy would be to invest when markets are down. Because if you're investing when uh, during the bad days, the probability of catching hold of the best days of equity markets would be much, much higher. Got so that. the advice to a lot of investors would be, uh, don't worry at all. Uh, you have invested for diversification benefit. Uh, U.S. markets uh, will be uh, volatile in the initial cycle of rate hike, but if the underlying earnings growth is strong, uh, if the underlying uh, you know economy is strong, definitely they would uh, you know add value to your portfolio. Okay, so you know uh, you were telling us earlier that this Edelweiss fund of fund, which has an exposure to global tech stocks, it's benchmarked to the J.P. Morgan U.S. Tech Fund, right? Uh, so how did that's that the fund, fund, that's the underlying fund, right? So how did the JP Morgan US Tech Fund cope with the rising yields in the past? I mean, just to understand the trajectory of what happened the last time around when yields rose. Right. So, uh, so one thing we need to understand, as I mentioned, tech stocks have been one of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the, have been at the forefront when it comes to earnings growth. Uh, the projected earnings growth for U.S. market, which is S&P 500, over the next one year is around 8 8.5%, whereas the projected earnings growth for our fund, which is the uh, Edelweiss U.S. Tech Fund of Fund, uh, and the underlying fund is J.P. Morgan U.S. Tech Fund, is around 20%. Uh, this itself shows that how the portfolio uh, could grow if it is just to mirror the underlying earnings growth. Uh, so whether interest rates are rising or falling over a medium term if earnings are going to grow uh, definitely uh, there is uh, returns which needs can be made uh, similarly in the past uh, as i mentioned the correlation of interest rates and these tech stocks have been very very low in fact it's been almost zero over the last uh, one or two decades uh, in past whenever there have been an interest rate hike this underlying 
portfolio, this underlying fund has generated, in fact, positive returns. And a lot of people would be surprised looking at this. Uh, 2013 uh, period, the returns were almost 20-22% during that period. Uh, in fact, that last entire cycle of 2013 till 2018, uh, this strategy have generated one of the best returns. And that period was when uh, interest rates in US were rising and bond yields uh, rose from the lows of you know uh, 0.6 in 2013 to almost 3% during this period. Mm -hmm. So this itself uh, is quite convincing for investors to stay invested. Hmm. Okay. Uh, just one final question on the reason for the correction. You know, what do you see as the main reasons for why these global tech stocks are under so much pressure, particularly that pocket? Because we've seen, you know, names like Amazon, Tesla are all down. That whole range is down anywhere between 10 to 25 percent. Is it only because of the overvaluation and the surge that we saw last year that's getting corrected? Or are there any other reasons why there's this big fall that we've seen in tech stocks this year? So tech stocks, I would divide in uh, two or three, uh, you know, uh, cohorts. If you see the larger uh, tech stocks, which have a very strong underlying earnings, uh, have not corrected much. So what you're saying is uh, are true for some of these stocks because of some stock specific reason. But on an average, the large cap uh, tech stocks have corrected in the range of maybe 10 to 12 percent or 10 to 15 percent, which is in line with S&P 500 or broader market correction. However, if you see the larger corrections in tech stocks have happened in the small cap names or names where there is no underlying earnings. Uh, and when there was uh, a low interest rate scenario where money was cheap, a lot of money was uh, chasing these kind of stocks where there was a hope that over the next one or two years, there would be earnings growth. However, when interest rate rise, uh, these kind of hopes uh, get scratched and these particular stocks have corrected a lot in in some cases they have corrected almost 30 40 or 50 percent uh, so these are the two segments where you know we have seen correction which is very broad in, in in line with the market in the large cap tech stocks which are very stable the earnings growth are still uh, visible and very very robust however the other side is very very small uh, you know startups kind of uh, companies which have got listed in us and they don't have earnings today but uh, a lot of people were buying them with the hope that they would project some earnings over the next two three years uh, a diversified portfolio is very very recommended at this kind of time and hence an active strategy where a fund manager you know uh, separates these stocks from the stocks which are actually going to grow healthy uh, is very very important so uh, remaining invested in quality stocks where earnings growth is visible would be very, very important for investors at this point in time. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Niranjan, for calming some frayed nerves there because it is a challenging time, especially for you know people who have exposure to these tech funds, which have been under a lot of pressure. But as you said, the earnings growth is pretty strong for these companies. The sector is in a big boom as well. And uh, history has taught us that rising interest rates have always resulted in positive uh, movements in global equity markets. Well, with that, it's curtains down on another edition of Smart Money. Thanks so much for watching.